Hey, John. Hi, Haley. Hey, Jean. How's it going? Good. How are you? Not too bad. I'm hoping that my camera is fixed. We shall yes, see. Yes, I hope so. If it's not fixed, what I might do, I'll just have to raise my hand if I have to shut it off, but keep your fingers crossed. Yes. It looks like it's working now. I know. Don't jinx us. Knocked on wood. Hey, Becky. Hi. How's it going? Good. How are you? Not too bad. How much time um, do I have on the agenda? <laughs> um, I actually didn't limit your time. Okay. Because that was intentional. Hmm. Hey, Jen. How are you, Jacqueline? I'm fine. How are you? Good. Not too bad. <laughs> sort of fine. Sort of fine. It's that kind of day. The weather's not great. <laughs> nope. But it is, but it exists. That's yes. as best as I can say. How are you? Um, a little tired. <laughs> Been running around all day, but but the good news is, Jean, my car is fixed. For, <laughs> Excellent. So <laughs> I'm happy about that. Makes a difference, <sighs> especially really in weather like this. Oh God, yeah. That was ugly out there today. Yeah, the beginning of the day was horrible. Yeah. Hi there. Hello there. How are you? We're doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Do you still have your Christmas lights up, Dennis? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, just those. Mm. They're, they're a little bit special, and they usually stay up until about... Uh, Valentine's Day, but okay. got a got a little bit away from me there. Yeah, <laughs> plus or minus a couple weeks. <laughs> yeah, that's all. Yeah, it's, the season and then some, huh? <laughs> yeah, you got to make up for the dreariness of the of late winter, you know. This is true. You got to do something. So everybody read the report cover to cover. You have it all memorized, <laughs> I'm sure. I I just when when did you send it? Um, Becky has sent it along, maybe last week. I haven't no. Haley, you got it right there. Hello, there Rosemary. <laughs> Haley, yes. They have my name wrong. They took my name from my email address, but that's my oh, maiden name. Oh, <laughs> um, what's what's your first Brodsky. name? Broad. Oh, you, yes. Okay, that's the Brodsky. B R O D S K Y. Oh, yeah. How's that? Very good. Oh, wow! Excellent. Quick. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. Let me push this back.
Hi, Earl Miller. Oh, hey. Oh. How you doing, buddy? Hey, you look good on camera. <laughs> Usually because I've got a camera in front of me when you see me. Yeah, it, it's a nice perspective. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about the lighting, right, Dennis? That's what yeah, really makes yeah. it. Yeah. That's, that's really. <laughs> <laughs> give, me, give me another year with Haley. I'll be able to take a selfie. I'm, I'm working towards it. You just got to get, you got to get the pop socket. It really is. It makes all the difference. A what? A pop socket? What pop socket. You put it on the back of your smartphone like this. Yeah, right. And then it lets you hold it. Oh, you get better oh, angles. Okay. And you can, then you can stand it on its side. It's, they're like 10 yeah, bucks. And it's not going to fit in the places I normally put it. Then you got to buy all the accessories. Oh. And then you can fit it in everything. <laughs> That's how they get you. <laughs> then you can't fit it in your back pocket. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, you kind of can. I'm going to turn on the caption setting. Oh, caption. Jacqueline Smith Crooks. Yes. How are you? That would be helpful. Hi, Rosemary. Hi. Hi, Dennis. <laughs> how you Hello, doing? Hello, Rosemary. Good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and Jacqueline. Oh, Jacqueline, I keep meaning to call you. I think of you so often. <laughs> you, I, that goes two ways. This is certainly the sweetest town committee. It, it just must be. <laughs> We're a really good, good team over you, here. Girl. Hmm. In the interest of time, Jean, do you want to start or do you want to wait? Well, I was just looking down at our list to see who we're missing. I think we're missing Terry, missing. And Chad, and I think Christina said she couldn't make yeah. it. Yeah. So I wait. Is, uh, is that Terry Carr? Yeah. He's in the attendee. Someone just needs to pull him in. Um, oh, yeah. And just Terry Carr. To... Oh, excellent. Hello, Terry Carr. Good eye, Earl. Hey, Terry. Perfect. <laughs> Earl, do you want to watch all the participants? <laughs> no, I'm No, kidding. I need to listen. I'm, I'm, oh, okay. I'm excited for this. All right. Oh, we got that. Okay. All right. So I think okay. we're just missing Chad. So. But we, we have a quorum. We have a quorum. Oh, good. Okay. Excellent. 503. Welcome, everyone. I'm going to call this special meeting on the Council on Aging to order. Um, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, chapter 30A, section 18. This meeting of the Council on Aging is being conducted via remote participation. This meeting is also being recorded. I'm now going to take roll call uh, to see who's here on the Council on Aging and if everyone else is, wants to double check their video and that their audio is working, that would be awesome. Ann Burton, excellent. Terry Carr. Here. <laughs> Thanks, Terry. Uh, Chad, I don't think he's here. Nope. Karen Helfer. Here. Jacqueline Smith. Crook. Brooks. I'm Brooks. My apologies. Dennis. Right here. And I, okay. Want to welcome everyone and especially welcome our special guest, Becky Bosch from the Pioneer Valley Planning Council. Also want to welcome age-friendly working group members, um, folks from Amherst Neighbors, um, town officials, and members of the public, as well as my esteemed colleagues on the Council on Aging. So glad you could all join us for this special meeting tonight. We're going to begin this evening's meeting with public comments. We have set aside 10 minutes um, if residents want to express their views, we will allow up to three minutes, but just ask that you all be mindful. Um, we are looking to keep the lion's share of the meeting for our um, 
to hear about the report. So without further ado, does anybody have any public comments they wish to make at this time? I don't see any. And if anyone wanted to, you would just have to raise your hand, click the hand icon down at the bottom, and we can allow you to speak. Everybody good? I think so. Okay. All right. Excellent. So now we'd like to move on to the presentation of Age and Dementia Friendly Project. And um, Becky, I know you've spent it many, many hours working on this, and we're excited to hear what you have to say. So take it away, Becky. Thanks, and thanks for having me today. Um, so generally with these meetings, I, I kind of go through the report um, to, to get comments on that, but I did create a presentation um, just to give a little bit of background and um, look at some of the goals and actions for several of the chapters. I don't know if we'll get through all of them, but um, uh, we'll give it a shot. <laughs> um, and I'm also, you know, feel free to interrupt me at any time if you have general comments about the report that um, that you'd like to share or questions or anything that you think um, was left out. Um, because that's that's the purpose for this meeting, and I hope I hope most of you had a chance to look at the report. I did send a link, and I sent the um, the full report out um, as an attachment. So I think I have I can share my screen. Um, So um, this is to talk about the community assessment and action plan. Um, as most of you know, we have been spending the last year or so on this report, even a little bit more than a year, um, with a number of community engagement activities, including a survey, which we had about 900 responses, um, and several public forums. So I'm not going to go through all of the charts and graphs that we that came out of the survey. Those were all um, in the public forums that we had. Um, but just a reminder that we this report and the survey were organized around these nine domains of an age and dementia friendly community. Um, so just looking at these, the built environment is often you know covered by in town plans and you know housing production plan transportation plans um, the social environment is not always included in those types of reports so just to um, reiterate that this the social environment and the built environment are all important to to healthy aging um, so i'm going to go through the different sections of the report um, and and mainly look at the goals and actions um, and I'm hoping that tonight we can have some discussion about, you know, really what are your key um, priorities for the next three to five years. And then what we'll do is um, create an executive summary with, say, the top three priorities for each section um, that can be distributed more broadly. Um, and, and then we'll also create an action plan that looks at you know who potential partners are or leads on certain actions and um and you know timelines for for those actions um so just to start off the the dementia friendly community goals and strategies um these were separated out because um really a dementia friendly community is all about building awareness of of the existence of people with dementia and um and you know how to communicate with people with dementia. And so I'll I'll go through these goals and strategies first. And I'm going to stop after each section just to see get any comments and and thoughts about you know if this resonates with you or if there are any priority goals and strategies that that you want to highlight um, in the, an action plan. So the goal for this one is to build awareness, acceptance, and a culture of support for people living with dementia and people who care for them. Um, and actions are continue to encourage trainings on how to recognize the signs of dementia and communicate with people with dementia for all municipal staff. 
Um, I think some of those are already happening, but this is just to, to sort of put it in words. Um, and then hold dementia friends trainings for community members, as well as all sectors of municipal government and public facing businesses and organizations um, and recruit volunteers to become dementia friends champions who can provide trainings. Um, so that's a, a dementia friends is is organized and run by the Jewish family and children's services. Um, and those trainings are available to anyone and it's a great way to sort of um, spread that out in the community. Um, and third, work with the triad program partners, police, fire, and emergency services to develop a registry of people living with dementia or other health concerns and encourage people with dementia and family members to register for this list. Um, and then identify and reach out to family caregivers to connect them with support programs and opportunities for meeting with other caregivers of people with dementia. Um, and then continuing identify respite care opportunities for family caregivers at all income levels and connect people to these resources. Um, identify memory cafes and other programs for people with dementia in the area and availability for residents of Amherst to participate. Um, continue to raise awareness about dementia and available resources for people with Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia and continue to expand services and programs for people with dementia and their families through partnerships with Cooley Dickinson Hospital and other health and social service agencies. I'm just going to pause and see um, if any of those goals and actions resonate um, and, and what your highest priority might be in that area. Feel free to unmute um, and we'll have a little bit of discussion for each area. <clears throat> There's there's one that I'm looking for, and my eyes are playing tricks on me because I've been on the computer for about an hour. Um, but connecting them with people other than in formal programs, um, maybe people who are who are not directly related. And I'm asking that because I'm working with somebody in another state. And one of the things getting outside of residential care um, settings and something as simple as asking about connecting with people from her church. I'm not sure that any programs do that, but I'm it, it brings to mind that question for me. So you're suggesting um, sort of support groups for people? Um, not so much, su well, support, but not formally support. Uh -huh. If there is some sense, because sh she continues to talk about how she feels caged in mm. um, and keeps longing for her house and, uh, We've been through this a number of times, uh, and I just wondered if there's any way to stretch their wings for a minute or two someplace outside the constraints of the institutional setting. Okay. Yeah, that's a good comment. Um, yeah, and that might be sort of the memory cafe area. Sorry, was someone else I'll speaking? I'll be a little late on the site, is it? Okay. Uh, somebody needs to mute themselves. Sorry. That's okay. Me. Jackie, are you thinking, I have a couple thoughts. Um, and... I'm Liz. Liz. With, and Liz. <laughs> with Amherst Neighbors High. Uh, uh, I don't know if you're thinking, this is an interesting thought. I don't know if you're thinking that people could somehow be attached or be connected with somebody who helps them navigate, like how to reach out to people in their church or how to to either be that person to go do those things where they get to stretch their wings or connect them to others who will help them do that. I, I think a little bit of the latter. Uh -huh. This person is was a, a music, multiculturalizing music teacher at the college level. And uh, that connection, and, and there are two things that I hear coming from her. One is that because of the nature of the place where she is, there are very few people who look like her. 
Mm -hmm. uh, while she appreciates the staff and the service people, uh, there's not somebody who looks like her that she can have uh, uh, a shared conversation in certain ways with. Yeah. And the other thing is feeling confined to the building. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I know that there probably are some legal implications, or I, I don't know, but I suspect um, that there might be some legal implications, but I can't give her an, any hope. Uh, her daughter is a playwright and travels throughout the country, and she's not able to be there a lot. And she doesn't have people in the community necessarily who know her, quote, know her. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that sense of connectedness is missing. Yeah. And it creates depression. Yeah. Well, and, and maybe this is on a much smaller scale than probably what you're thinking, but with Amherst Neighbors, we've just started working with the Pioneer Valley Memory Care Initiative, where we link people, link volunteers with members who have who are experiencing memory loss. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, it, those volunteers could very much do what you're think what you're talking about. Um, you know, it's basically we've got a bunch of volunteers, and then we have a subgroup of people who are w interested in being matched in this way. Okay, but. It is the kind of thing that we can do, um, presuming we get kind of a nice, healthy, robust volunteer group yeah, of people. Yeah, yeah. And they're matched individually, but that would be something that would be really great to be able to do. I agree. It's hard. Liz, do you use technology to do that? Because I know there are a lot of um, there are a lot of platforms out there that you can develop. And I know this because I've done it for my aunt who's in rural Vermont and, mm -hmm. you know, um, there's like a meal train and then there's another one um, and I'm not remembering it, but you can sort of post what's needed for someone and then other people can sign up for it. You know, like someone wants to go see a musical concert. Is there anyone out there who could bring them, you know? Yep. So you, yep. you sort of, you, you tailor it to people's interests and then, um, for the volunteers, they 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 actually have something they can sign up for that they might be interested in too. I just want to interject real quick just to recognize that Anne's had her hand up for a while. Yeah, yeah we can, after we can Liz, go we can on. Share. It's just okay. Yeah. It, oh. Yeah. Go ahead, Anne. I uh, just wanted to tell you that some years ago uh, we had a neighbor who had dementia and. Everyone on the block knew about it, and I just organized a calendar and said, mm -hmm. who can devote one hour, one day a week mm -hmm. to take a walk with, mm -hmm. to reading with, to, you know, becoming company. And this was a very active woman, woman with early onset dementia, but we actually had people who took her out on bike rides and she was out yeah. and doing, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it just yeah. organized the neighbors. Yeah. So I, I recognize that Amherst Neighbors does a wonderful job, but Often these are volunteers outside of the community and there are legal restrictions on them. Whereas when you're just doing a neighborly thing, mm -hmm. one doesn't have to worry so much about the legal restrictions. So I'm, I'm making a suggestion that it's possible to organize neighborhoods, blocks. This yep. is, um, this is neighbors. what she, excuse me for cutting you off, Anne. But That's this, because you know, she, she misses... She's not really able, and I had to help because I said my day may come at some point in time. Her daughter called for me to help when they were needing to make the transfer, and my friend describes it as her having been um, kidnapped. Um, but she misses uh, gardening uh, and the neighbors coming by to admire her garden, mm -hmm. and she theirs. Uh, that sense of real connectedness. She's not a technology person. 
Um, in fact, the phone isn't, I think that's probably about, other than the piano, that's about as much technology as she involves herself in. Yeah. Uh, but I, I can, I can feel, I can feel the, the life declining, not just the memory, but the life inside of her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're making some really good points. And, um, you know, depression often comes with de dementia and, and, and it's a, it's a loss of, of your regular daily life. You isolation. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, isolation. Yeah. So I, I will add something there. I'm not have to <laughs> play with the wording, but I, I appreciate those comments. Um, and it just goes to show, you know, there's, there's a need for, <laughs> for this, I think in every community, but um, yeah, thank you. Are there any other comments on, on this? <laughs> and anything that you're already doing that, you know, we don't need to include in here. Can you flip back to the four things that came before this? Yeah. <clears throat> Earl, I'm curious what you see. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm eating a PB&J. Can you just reiterate the question for me? <laughs> I'm just curious what Cress has seen in terms of the outreach that you do and coming in contact with people with memory loss. Yeah, I think there's a lot of education to be done in the wider community. Um, I think people don't have a sense of what it takes to be a caregiver. And I, I think that yeah. is a unique trauma for folks. Mm -hmm. Um I think folks don't necessarily really understand how dementia works. Mm -hmm. And so I often will hear from people that someone is behaving in a certain way. And when you arrive, you realize that this is such a clear case of someone doing their best with, with real gaps in their memory. Yeah. And, um, and we see that actually fairly frequently. Um, I would say we're, we're in Haley's mm -hmm. office uh, talking about a case several times a week um, yeah. and it's been like that from our very first week uh there's a profound loneliness um in in that community that that something something needs to make an impact we're doing our best but it is um it is it is vast absolutely and i think um i think we can cross off the memory cafe portion of these goals or action plan um that's something that we started back in late november with a handful of people and we've had up to 30 participants from all walks of life. Um, Earl's right, there's a lot of isolation that's been exacerbated by the pandemic and people don't realize that caregiving, it's it's a 24 hour job that you're not getting paid for and people yeah. don't recognize and a lot of people, employers or you know your your school, they, they don't recognize what's involved. I think when people think of well, I need time off to care for my infant. People have a general conception of what that's like, mm -hmm. but they don't understand the other side of caregiving, which is working yeah. with somebody who's older and the unique needs yeah. that they have. Mm -hmm. the, the other piece I'd add is people also don't give the proper weight to that the caregiver generally had a profound relationship with this human being yeah. Yeah. their yeah. entire lives, that they're, they're often watching their parent um, and that is a hard place to be for any human being. And so um, that's something that I've really been enlightened to. I mean, I think I, I feel like I thought I knew that, but I don't think I felt that. Um, and over the last year in Amherst, I, I have felt the profound weight of folks feeling unsupported as they watch um, someone who, who was, um, you're often seeing a parent they loved and who cared for them there. It is... Um, it is a unique trauma and, and yeah. I've sat in living rooms with people and cried. It, it is mm -hmm. tough. It's really sad. Your, your, your parent in that case becomes a different person and yeah. you have to have a totally new relationship with them. And how do you process? I have to take care of my parent, but my parent doesn't know who I am. I have to get to know a whole new person, but I have all my memories. Uh -huh. And then on top of that, you've got your own personal life. You've got your own things going on and it's, it's very stressful. We do offer a caregiver support group. We're looking at doing some more um, caregiver respite services at the senior center, but we can also connect folks to Highland Valley Elder Services. 
they have their own respite care program for caregivers. Um, so we would certainly encourage people to reach out um, if they need help with that. Okay. Becky, was there any reach out to faith communities at all? Have they been included or, I mean, I, I would think they, they could be added to the network to help support mm. folks. Mm. That's a good point. I, I'll put that in as a recommendation. I know we did, um, I think they were on the list for the, the working group, but, you know, I, I think people are pretty busy and, and I don't, I don't know if many attended, but um, I think, you know, collaborating with the faith community to, to provide that connection um, and, and also to hold some educational trainings for people in the, in that community would probably be good. Mm -hmm. okay. Kay has her hand up. Oh. Oh, and Jennifer does too. I didn't see. Sorry, I, I only see a few people on my screen. <laughs> okay. um, let's take Jennifer and then Kay. Um, I think Kay had her hand up before me, so she oh, can okay. go first. Go ahead, Kay. Sorry, I can't see you on the screen. And I'm a resident at 23 Greenleaves. And I have recently assumed uh, the responsibility of being a caregiver for a woman who has mild dementia. Um, her daughter, who lives in Amherst, um, she has provided um, 20, I should say seven days a week care for her mom, uh, four hours a day, I believe, just to do things of um, activities of daily living. She doesn't need any personal care because she, she manages that on her own. Uh, but I think the most important thing in dealing with this person um, is, uh, given a lot of stimulation. When I'm there, uh, I engage her, you know, she doesn't have very good eating habits. So I'll tell her that I haven't had lunch and would she join me for lunch? So I know that she's eating properly. Um, when the weather is permissible, I take her for rides and I try to engage her. I mean, she, she, she's a talker, so that's helpful. Um, but she's cognizant. Um, of what's yeah. happening to her. Yeah. I mean, and I'm yeah. finding this a, yeah. a very learning experience because I used to take her at face value and I used to say to her, um, Melanie, have you eaten? She'd say yes. And then when I would check with her daughter, she said, don't take her at face value. So, um, you know, it's for me, it's a learning experience because I'm, I'm interested in dementia and uh, particularly Alzheimer's, people who suffer with Alzheimer's. But I think that uh, for someone who's mildly, has mild uh, dementia, I think it's important to offer a lot of stimulation and to engage that person so that they don't regress further uh, with their illness. Yeah, and that's, um, so in terms of, of a lead for these kind of things, would that be, Amherst neighbors or just having more sort of educational programs in the community? I, I, I think having educational programs in the community, the way we do, you know, CPR trainings, mm -hmm. you know, I, I mean, but I mean, it's just, there could be education that's provided to whomever. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> or it could be done, you know, neighborhood by neighborhood or around certain people, but. And does the town have a registry of people and, and do you think that's, um, that's something that's needed? I know that's been um, suggested at the Mass, um, Dementia Friendly Massachusetts is just developing some kind of registry. I mean, that's mainly for people who are, you know, at risk of of getting of wandering and getting lost and so that's maybe further along but um I think Southampton might have something like that so that if you know people are called to the home for some you know for a variety of reasons emergency reasons that the responders first responders know yeah um and have a little bit of a heads up that that's that that's an issue I think that would be really helpful 
Earl, do you guys keep track of that? Um, like when you do get your calls, do you keep track of, you know, people's, whether they have dementia or other medical conditions? Sorry, was that for me? Yeah. yeah. We, Are you still we, eating we, your sandwich? I am. Uh, we, we do track age and I would say we track pretty close to 901, uh, about a third of all of our calls uh, are seniors. Do you track whether they have dementia or other we, conditions? We okay. Yeah, Haley recommended that to us. So we've been doing yep. that from day one. Okay. And, and who they, has access to those names? So we would consider them generally part of a public, uh, part of their health record. Um, with dementia being a diagnosis, they shared it to us in the context of, uh, of a support. Uh, if, if a registry existed, we would be glad to make that part of our process of asking right. people if they'd like to register and supporting them to do it. Yeah. Yeah, we would that you, no problem. You. I, I do know that uh, through uh, working with uh, Dick Yorga on uh, the SALT Council, that the police department does have a very solid idea of, of who these people are and who need help. And, uh, and I, I, I kind of wish that Captain Young would, uh, would be around on this panel um, because he's got uh, a solid idea of, of uh, exactly how extensive that network is. And also who, who has access to it. So is it right. like if EMT show up, is that something that's gonna be like a little banner? Wait, 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 let me jump, oh, jump in. Goes. Oh, okay. <laughs> let me Never over talk to fire chief. Uh, <laughs> no, come on, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, what, what 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 it is? You know, we we have we, we do do have an extensive. You know, when uh, we run run in run into into these cases, we we make it make it make a record of of, of it in the uh, CAD in, in the, uh, the um, our computer aided did, did dispatch. So mm -hmm. it's there. So if if we go back or if we go or or us or or the police police go. Then, then we're we're noted, 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 notified about the his 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 history of this particular uh, you know address or per, per person, but that's really as far as that information can can go. We can't really disseminate it will will willy nilly nilly. Yeah, you know, there there's a very 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 strict group 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 of folks that are allowed to have access to that that type type of stuff. Thank you, Chief. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Real quick before we check, I would just say sure. actually Haley knowing the folks the way she does is probably our best asset. Yeah. So when when something comes in, Haley's able to give us really useful information really quickly. And that relationship between uh, the senior center and public safety really is key. That's great. Sure. It's, it's, I, I'm sorry. I, I've had my hand up and I want to ask this oh. question. Sure. Is there any, I understand that you know of people once you have had an interaction with them, is there any way that relatives and friends can register, is there a registry, mm -hmm. a way of capturing people who haven't yet become your problems, yeah. mm -hmm. but I, I mean, it just this, seems this, this to be a big gap here. This is Dick Yorga. The police department has a program where, uh, that they initiated specifically originally for wanderers, people yeah. who, uh, yeah. so, so that they have that list and they create the list of uh, people that they interact with, with dementia, but well, by law it's kept confidential. It's for their own use only to the best of my knowledge. Uh, and yeah, um, that was I'm not really not talking about that. I am talking about a, a list or a registry somewhere that mm. would let police mm. and fire know where yeah. people are yeah. if there were an emergency. I know that I would have a friend who I would like to see on a list who has never come to your attention. Exactly. So it's yeah. to me that the police and fire department somehow need to communicate 
to the rest of Amherst that there is an opportunity to put someone who is at risk on a list. No one knows that. And I think that that's something we can collaborate with the council and our in our um, cell council branch. And I do want to just take a quick second. You know, Jen's had her hand up for yeah, a while. Dick Florida has it for a while. Um, so that I think anything within that purview would just be something that we can do as a council and, you know, collaborate with some of our other departments because they are more yeah. than willing to do so. And that is a, a one of the recommendations here was to develop a registry. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. Um, Jennifer, sorry about that. I had you on my different screen. <laughs> no, that's okay. I, I just wanted to say that I, I went to a friend's house one day and she had something on her door that said, there's a cat that lives here. There's a small, a child and certain people. So I don't know. And it was, I think for the fire department originally, yeah. but it just kind of broke down. And so I didn't know if there was a way for folks to distribute that out to the, which might go through salt, um, distribute out that form so that people can fill it out and put it on their doors so that people can be aware at minimum that way too. Um, and then I kind of forgot what my other statement, oh, I know what it was now. Um, and this is nothing to do with what we're currently talking about, but I do want to say that I know that particularly the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee is really trying to um, emphasize the importance of not just child care, but elder yeah. care. And yeah. so I think that in places where you often see child care, you, we should start to look or ask people to begin to include elder care as well. Yeah, yeah. that's a great idea. Yeah, Thank I you. agree. I agree. Okay, um, Jacqueline. Yes, and I'll, I, I, I think that Jen, Jennifer just said something that um, I was thinking, especially uh, press, when we say, and I don't know what your guidelines are, but I think it would be very important for press to have that roster of people um, because going to visit people for emergencies that might better deal, be dealt with by human services or social service people would be good. Yep. Certainly. And I would also say that for the senior center, I mean, we we are the ones who can help people get the resources they need when they do have that diagnosis. And we can work in tandem with Crest and we can work in tandem with the fire and police departments. Um, but if people at the senior center know, we can be their first stop. Um, and then I and then I know Dick's had his hand up for a while. Go ahead, Dick. Yes, thank you. Um, the it's an important for us to access the medical community because mm. the doctors see this first um, more than the average person does, and and they're looking to to, to help their patients, and uh, and you know within the confines of the legal regulations, they're very interested in helping. And they, as a community, should be addressed. All of all of the doctors, let alone the the ones who special specialize in seniors. Yeah. So it sounds like a you know a registry or something could be a voluntary you know active something that people could sign up for voluntarily, and they would just know that the information could be shared with maybe the senior center, Cress, police, and fire. And then you you all can contact those people and make sure they know about resources as well as you know so that you know about where they are. Um, okay. Um, okay, I'm going to move forward, <laughs> and also feel free to email me if there's anything else to add. But I think um, I have some good ideas of of some other um, recommendations to add. Um, so in the survey, the main focus areas that people wanted to um, thought the town should should look at in the next five years was housing, um, health and community services, and then transportation. So um, I'm going to go through at least housing and transportation. I do have health and community services too, but we'll see how far we get. 
Um, so housing, um, and these are just a few statistics to, to remind you all of, if, or to let you know of if you weren't at the forums. Um, most people want to remain in Amherst and even more want to be able to stay in their own home, um, either independently or with a caregiver. So there's um, some conflicting data. You know, I think what we find in this work is that people really want to stay in their homes, but there comes to a point where they can't, you know, and that's where we um, we ask if, you know, if, if there was a change in circumstances and you want to downsize, what type of housing would you like to move into? And um, this is where, you know, senior independent living was the most, apartment or condo, um, assisted living, and um, a location close to services. So some people want to stay in their own home some people don't but they have to because there aren't these other options available so i think that's what we we came up with there um there are challenges to aging in place housing was not available or not affordable for almost 15 percent um people had concerns about paying for home re repairs um, and home modifications um concerns about basic home maintenance and paying for utilities so especially with people with dementia, the longer they live at home, the harder it becomes to be able to stay in their home because of what it takes to manage a home. Um, some of the other challenges were um, need help with basic tasks. Um, and that's where I think Amherst Neighbors is really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and 8% said need help finding people to do yard work or snow shoveling. So that was a big one. And then 12.5% said they don't have a friend or neighbor um, to help. Um, so housing goals and actions are two parts to this. Um, the first was making sure there's a range of safe, affordable and accessible single and multi-unit housing options um, available to meet the needs of the aging population. So, in this section, I really want you all to think about, you know, what what could this group do, the Council on Aging, or a, a and you know, if you develop a working group to implement this plan going forward, you know, what what's a real what can this group do in terms of housing? Because I know there's a lot of, you know, there's a housing trust that that is doing a lot of this work, but um, you know, this this group could be, you know, maybe called on to advocate um, when certain housing developments are proposed. So that's where I continue to advocate for new housing developments that are universally accessible, include smaller units and are located within walking distance of town centers, um, provide incentives um, like property tax rebates, flexible parking requirements to bring grocery stores, that's something that came up, um, or neighborhood markets. You know, if people do do live in town centers, they need places to get food. Um, provide incentives for private owners of first floor rental units to rent to older adults with benefits, including lower rates of turnaround. Um, so that's sort of getting into, you know, the conflict between rental units going to students versus, you know, having rental units available for, for older adults. Mm. Okay. Um, Becky, just to let you know, Jacqueline had her hand up first, and then John has his hand up. Okay, go ahead, Jacqueline. There's a, a concept I came across last year, uh, in I believe it was conversation with somebody in another state, and they call it congregate housing, and that would be probably appropriate for people who are in the early to moderate, whether they rent rooms like uh, you're saying students, but that concept of congregate housing is gaining momentum in some cities, not all of course, but uh, it really, it, it, it resonated because it allows people to stay, if not in their own house, perhaps, in a familiar environment and non-institutional. We tend to resort to the institutional um, model because that's what we are most accustomed to. And when people are looking for options, they, they do what they know. 
and what they need. That's a great suggestion. Yeah, I, I do know of some examples of congregate housing, and that's it's a great way for people to have that social interaction as well as, you know, maybe have some support within the housing, you know, someone to cook or or just to, to help with basic yeah. things. Yeah, and that might require advocacy at some levels that we might not have uh, opened ourselves up to or given serious thought to but being creative in that respect. Um, John, do you have? Yeah, I have a couple of comments. I, I'll just comment on what Jacqueline just said, and that is that um, I, I don't know if this is exactly congregate housing, although it can be, and that is where an, an organization or an agency rents a house and then uses it to allow people to have shared living. So they can share tasks of cooking, cleaning, yeah. and social networking among themselves. Um, but like everything else on Becky's list, and it's a good list, this is not a criticism, um, there's a lot to do. Yeah. yeah. Um, fan financing is a major issue. Zoning can be an issue, as she points out later on, among the actions. And unlike the things that were discussed under goal one, these goals generally are things that take at least a year and often as many as yeah. five yeah. years yeah. to accomplish. So they're on a very different time scale than everything else. And uh, so the question is, who is going to do this? Um, you know, what is the role of the town? What's the yes. role of the yeah. housing trust? What are the role of developers? Yes. Who's going to organize yeah. this and make this yes. happen? Yes. Um, because it's not easy. No. Um, you know, just to cite an example, um, Valley Community Development will be opening in about two to three months a uh, studio apartment building uh, near or really enveloped in Amherst College uh, on Route 9. And it took them close to five years. And we're talking about a 28-unit building. Um, but that would be an example of the kind of option that some people would like. Yeah. Um, I'd see an opportunity for a larger development for older adults on West Pomeroy Lane, mm -hmm. where the old golf course is now undergoing various kinds of changes. And uh, I, I'd like to see support for that. All of this requires advocacy and organization yeah. and Funds. ideas for financing. <laughs> and the, at the end of the day, the support of the town council. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, uh, Becky, you don't say who's going to do this. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Which I, 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 I'm not criti criticizing you for, but really that's one of the things that we need to decide. And we need to decide it. People need to set up, step up and say, okay, I'm going to work on this. And I want two or three or four or five other people to work on this with me. Yeah. Because there are opportunities there. And there already are some programs that support this direction. And we have to make sure for those existing programs that people take advantage of them and that new programs are developed. Great. Thank you. Um, um, and I think Terry had her car hand up first and then Jacqueline has her hand up again. Yeah. Okay, I live at an over 55 condo place. And I think it is great. We all watch out for each other. We know everybody's kids or spouses. And, you know, if we see something, we can tell them. And we look out for each other. We This is the only over 55 place in Amherst. Hmm. And Hadley doesn't have any. They're working on getting one. But you know how long things take. But, I mean, that's what I think would be better. You know, because it's over 55 people, no kids, no parties. And 
we watch out for each other. So if we know that somebody's slipping, we can say something to them or their kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, Jacqueline. I agree with uh, uh, the, the last, I guess, three comments. One, um, what you're talking about, something my daughter who's in Miami is talking about creating a village, intergenerational village, mm -hmm. that she's very new at this thing from <laughs> the ground up. Uh, but the vision is there. And I think that is absolute because uh, research has shown what happens to elders who are in constant, not all, but many elders who are in constant engagement with kids. Um, and so I think I think I think that's that's great. I I appreciate um, John's comments too about the reality of it, and and I think you've done a darn good job pulling this this together, uh, Becky. Thank you. Um, I also think that it's important in many communities, elders are looked at as with an afterthought. And do we need volunteers? Yes. We also need commitment from the town. Yeah. Uh, elders, the, their numbers go into um, making some things possible for the town that, quote, might not otherwise be able to happen. Justification, having been a grant writer once upon a time. Um, and so I think that if there's any honor, it need not be superficial. It needs to be action speaking as loud as words, if not louder. Mm. And they need, the elders need to be, seniors need to be um, an ever present uh, consideration in things that are being done. All seniors in Amherst don't have financial capabilities of some seniors in Amherst. And the question becomes that of whether they are to be included or excluded. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. Yeah, and that's that's a big part of this whole process and project is to really wait, raise that awareness and, and make sure that you know older adults are included in all planning processes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thanks. John, you have your hand up again. Yeah, I wanted to make a couple of points. I, I agree with what Terry said, which is that there are over 55 communities in Amherst that, although I'm not part of them, I've known people who live there who see them as very successful. I think the problem for Amherst is that for many people, they're not affordable. Mm. And we haven't really developed much in the way of affordable housing for seniors in, a, in more than a decade. Hmm. Most of the new development, like green leaves, for example, um, have occurred again in the last 10 years and they don't, they aren't really affordable hmm. for many people who will need um, subsidies or need lower rents than are available there. So that's one of the things that we need to work sure, toward is assuring that uh, new units are affordable. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. OK. OK. Um, going to the next one. Um, so this one is uh, goal is more about you know, providing, yeah, providing support and, and assist with alternative housing models to enable Sorry, this is bad English <laughs> to take up for it. To enable Amherst residents to safely age in place. Um, so that that speaks to both aging in home and also aging in community. Yes. Um, so continuing to connect homeowners with the home modification loan and grant programs um, that are available. Continuing to provide information assistance for older residents in single family homes to get property tax abatements. Um, provide assistance and education to older adults on housing options such as home sharing or how to design and build accessory apartments for income or housing for caregivers. 
um, consider pursuing a program such as Masterly, which screens students to rent rooms from older adults at reduced rates in exchange for assistance with home care, or basic tasks. And I was just adding potential, <laughs> potential people to help with that. Um, collaborate with Amherst neighbors to understand areas of greatest need for people aging in place. Um, pursue funding or collaboration with students or other groups to provide additional services where needed. Wow. Pause here. Along these lines, um, Highland, not Highland Valley, but Life Path up in um, Franklin County has a home share program. And so you can rent. Uh, and the, the, what you pay for rent varies according to how much help you are going to be for the individual. Mm -hmm. And it would be great if we could have something like that here. Yeah, Vermont has that as well. Yeah. Uh, it's called Home Share Vermont. Yeah. Um, Karen. Yeah, I think that connecting with students is a great idea. Uh, there's an incredible housing shortage for graduate students at UMass. And what they're building right now is primarily for undergraduates. So that housing shortage is going to continue. Mm -hmm. So I think there's real potential there, you know, and I, um, I, I don't know how we're going to choose priorities here, what the action plans <laughs> are, but, you know, that's what I think should be um, pretty high up there. Yeah. Oops, sorry about that. Um, okay. Yes, I will note that. Yeah, I think, I think there, there's a lot of opportunity with all the colleges and university that you have in the community to, to um, you know, where can you find opportunities there to collaborate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, Next. okay. So that's what I have for housing. Did I leave anything out or is there anything that you want to highlight as priority? Just gonna... Oops. I'm just going to put this in editing mode so that I can, oops, sorry about that. Um, so I can add to these. Um, just going back to this one. Um, so these are all for you know, making sure that uh, the housing supply, and I didn't put a lot of actions there, but um, they are big ones. So I just wanna make sure there's there's not something I should add there. You wanna get up? Oh, uh, sorry, Jacqueline has, Jacqueline, you have a hand up. And this is my last one, I hope. Uh, I, I appreciate what you've done. Uh, you've pulled together uh, some work, I think that is, absolutely imperative for the lifeblood of a given population in the community. Um, one of the things that it brings to my mind, uh, uh, being a, a clergy uh, periodically <laughs> during COVID, um, this offers a way of reinventing the question coming to uh, clergy people and church people in my experiences is how do we maintain church? And one of the big challenges has come that we, it will never be the same. And I think the same goes, it's not just taking place within walls, whether you are uh, in a church, a synagogue or wherever, um, whatever the worship place, it is not necessarily going to be confined to that anymore. And the question is, how do we, how do we engage uh, a thriving sense of living uh, for as many people as possible in being able to reimagine what it means to be an old person and living a fruitful life? And I think you've put forth uh, some ideas to really. Um, explore. I appreciate that. Thank you. Chad. 
Yes, um, I'd like to second the uh, change of attitude and opinion. Uh, none of that is on there. Things like uh, public education, um, attitude change. But what I raise my hand highest for is a little more, um, let's see, adjectives that are more forceful instead of continue and, and that sort of thing. Um, you know, I would, I would like to see adjectives that are more, um, are stronger uh, for uh, the housing issue. It is such a big issue. It's a national issue as well as local for every town in, this, in the country. <laughs> um, I'd like to see something in there that says, um, you know, uh, create linkages with local senators uh, on the housing issue or, or mm. something that's a little more um, involved in advocacy. Uh, mm. Mm. Anyway, uh, what page was that? Uh, you know, it said continue. Um, this one, continue to advocate. It's on, the, it's on the screen. Oh, you have an advocate one? Yeah. Okay, I would say, um, Let's see, um, create new um, uh, channels of advocacy by, mm. Um, mm. you know, uh, meeting once per month with local senator, et cetera, mm. something like that. Mm. Uh, housing, uh, housing boards, uh, HU, uh, yeah, HUD, uh, you know, um, Amherst Housing Authority, whatever it might be, I'd, I'd like to see something in there that is a little more, um, mm. This is a big issue. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Also, our our Senator Joe is working on, on pilot. Uh, the main, uh, you know, uh, anchor institution in this area it, it is not willing to talk to us. They're like the bully on the street. They don't have to talk to us. Uh, the, all the businesses are oriented towards the students. Um, I'd like to see something there that says, um, you know, again, um, advocacy or linkages or whatever, to find a way to um, help with the issue of uh, absentee landlords uh, renting to uh, renting private homes to students, uh, because what happens is that drives up. The, the cost of a home. So, um, you know, pe people can't can't live here. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, those are just a couple of issues that I don't see um, listed out strong enough for uh, my gut. <laughs> okay. That here under the rental part. Uh, I'll work on that. <laughs> um, John. Um, I just wanted to reiterate something that Jacqueline raised earlier, which is the idea of congregate housing, although I wouldn't use that language. As I said earlier, I use the language of shared living arrangements. Yeah, yeah. Um, students throughout Amherst have shared living arrangements. And um, with some structure, I think that, um, again, it would be possible to have shared living arrangements for older people as well. Yeah. And so I didn't want to lose that idea which yeah. Jacqueline had introduced earlier. Okay. Okay. Jennifer has her hand up. Yes, Jennifer. So I was just to add on to the shared living arrangement. So I foster a woman with disabilities who lives with me under a program called shared living. So I don't, but that's also through the state. So I don't know how you connect with, I mean, these are the parts that I don't know that how mm -hmm. we would connect or someone would connect with the states to kind of make that an actual program that could happen. I mean, it's run through all multiple different uh, organizations out here in the community. So I just thought I'd add that. It's called shared living? Yes. So the one I work for is through ServiceNet, but I believe BHN has its own additional program as well. Okay. Um, so usually their thing is um, brain injuries. So 
I don't know where dementia falls into brain injuries. So, yeah, it sounds like something that's similar to what the Nesterly thing is, or um, Home Share Vermont. It's it's a similar kind of a situation where people are are screened, but you know, looking for assistance. Um, and having someone in their home. Okay, does anyone else have a hand up that I missed? Okay. Um, just moving on. So transportation, um, we saw that 25% of the respondents walk. Uh, most people still drive themselves. Um, and then 10% had bike or e-bike. Some of the challenges and barriers, um, limited options for people that need assistance getting in and out of vehicles and limited amount of wheelchair accessible drivers, um, high demand of rides to, for immersed, to, from immersed neighbors um, because people want the flexibility of rides and personal vehicles. 25% um, of people walk, but there were many locations where people don't feel safe walking due to poor or no sidewalks, crosswalks, or drunk college students. Um, and there were several locations identified in the survey. Um, need for better snow clearing, especially at bus stops, and a need for benches at transit stops. Um, so goals and actions here, um, ensure that transportation services are available and information on how to use them is easily accessible for residents of all ages and abilities allow access to food, medical appointments, employment, educational, and social connections. Um, to expand hours and service area for paratransit services for people who use wheelchairs, both public and private, um, for days when the senior centers close. Um, consult with mass mobility to determine a possible solutions for ride services um, when, you know, ride, when rides to supplement or replace ride services offered by Amherst neighbors. I know that's that's a big, um, there's big demand for that. Um, so possibly look into contracting with Uber and Lyft um, or to consider adopting a micro transit program, uh, expand driver, volunteer driver program with Amherst neighbors through incentives such as stipends or property tax work off program to compensate drivers for time and fuel costs. I'll just pause here um, and Hope you're muted. Muted. Um, I've been talking to several people who, because they no longer drive, are dependent on the PVTA system for transportation. And they've all told me because the PVTA system is based on usage mostly by students that when vacation time or summertime comes around, their transportation options become really limited. So I think perhaps we might look into discussing with the PVTA the fact that um, many seniors who no longer drive are dependent on the PVTA bus system, which changes radically mm. with uh, student schedules, student vacation schedules. That's a good point. It yeah, is. very good. Point. I would just add to that, that we should mention that that's the fixed route service. People can still take the paratransit and schedule a ride that way. But you're right, once the students go away, the fixed route bus service, um, it can run sometimes only once an hour instead of every half an hour. May yeah. I also yeah. add to that that this document also points out that seniors are not really using the PVTA very much, mm -hmm. which sort of is is a contradiction. Uh, and and perhaps uh, we could make a, a a greater effort to let the senior citizens know mm -hmm. that it is indeed free, mm -hmm. and if we get the ridership up then maybe they can actually maintain uh, a consistent schedule across the across the seasons, even in the summertime when the kids aren't around. Good idea. Right. 
There, yeah. there is another problem for seniors using the PVTA, the ones that do not live in town or downtown, the stops are about a mile apart. Mm. And uh, it true. does mean that in order to get to a PVTA stop, they're walking in the road. Um, mm. that's, that's kind of difficult for many seniors. Mm. I, I don't know what the solution is to that, but I think perhaps there might be some consideration to where there are concentrations, mm -hmm. let's say, of older people and having more PVTA stops yeah. than yeah. you know one every mile. Yeah. Something but we yeah. need to, to engage in discussion with the PVTA as to what we can do to make it more available for senior use. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say going along with that to also look at the sidewalks or lack yeah. thereof yes. um, in nearby, whether it's the communities where folks are living or near where the, the bus stops are located, because yes. there are places in town where you can travel on a sidewalk for a while and the sidewalk just ends, yeah. but you can see the bus stop ahead and you have to walk out in the street. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm going to add that. Um, I did put in there the Complete Streets Prioritization Plan. Um, I know there is a, a bike and pedestrian plan for the town, but that's that's an area um, that the town could get some more funding um, to develop a plan and get some funding for implementation. But um, yeah, I agree, the sidewalks. So sidewalks near senior living and, or to get to connect to bus stops. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, Anne. <laughs> yes, um, I, I just today had an experience of talking to a, a senior who's 20 years younger than I am on my block who told me she had a bad fall because the pothole <laughs> that had been reported multiple times, and we have no sidewalks on Dana Street. There's a maybe 10% of the street has a sidewalk, none on either side. So we walk in the road, and although she knew that there was a large pothole that's been there for four years, she fell into it because of the lack of lighting. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, you know, you can go online and report that, and how do I do it? And it turned out that making a report of a sidewalk that needs repair mm. is somewhat complex. <laughs> it's not a simple matter of, of going to the amherstma.gov site and finding a way to report that there's a, a sidewalk problem. And just to add to that, I take um, a, an exercise class at the senior center and I got called by the woman who runs the class today saying there would be no class. Why? She fell on an unsafe oh. sidewalk. Oh. So twice today that, that has just come up in the course of general conversation. There has to be an easier way for people to report problem sidewalk, dangerous sidewalks, and there has to be a quicker way to get them repaired. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me just put that in there, thanks. Um, Terry. If you have a disability and you have a PVDTA card, you can call them and get a van to come to your house to pick you up and bring you to the doctors. And then you call them when you're ready to be picked up and then they'll pick you up and bring you home. So you don't have to go to the PVTA bus stops, you know? Right. So a lot of my neighbors use that and they come right here and pick them up. Yeah. I, yeah, we do have that. I think there was a comment in one of the forums about expanding those hours and service area in case, you know, for people who need to, to go out of town because it's, it's limited, I guess. Yes. Yeah. yeah, they don't go too far and they don't go 
If you a, have a disability, they'll come seven days a week, but you have to plan it ahead. You have to make right. it. Right. Uh, Jacqueline. Um, there, it, this is something not on transportation. And I just want to know if there's another category that's going to be coming up. This is about use of the landfill. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> I'm not uh, sure. Well, it's uh, there are two things that have come up in some com conversations. And one is that whether you need to use a sticker for a month or 12 months, it's the same price. And I think some thinking should be given to that, not only uh, in terms of, of seniors, but just thinking. Um, Probably and, under services. Yeah, community okay. services, I guess. Okay. So are, are you saying because some people don't live in town all year and- Right, so right, right, okay. right. And, and even if they live in town, if they don't use the service until X point of time, there should, yeah, it's like if, if you buy uh, stickers for some other things, uh, they prorate it. Okay. You don't yeah. pay for time that you don't use. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm making a note about that. Um, yeah, that's through the DPW. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just wanted to check, Haley, have you been looking at the people not currently panelists to see if anyone else had comments? I have. Yes, I have not okay. seen anyone raise their hand. And I may as well point out that our meeting is scheduled to end at about 630. So we've got about 15 minutes, um, but maybe we can continue this at another time if there's interest. Yeah. There's a few more sections to go through, so um, I'm happy to come to another meeting or um, take comments a different way. But I think this has been a really useful discussion. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, I can move to buildings and outdoor spaces, or do you want? Do you have more you need to cover, Haley, for your meeting? Or um... Um, no, I'm I'm happy. I think the flow of this conversation has been really good, so I can just keep at it. I just wanted to let everyone know the time. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, okay, so buildings and outdoor spaces, some assets were, there's a um, self-assessment and transition plan in place. Um, the town's been successful in getting funds for shared streets and spaces projects. Um, there's miles of trails and several shared use paths for safe off street walking or biking, um, and then small neighborhood parks. Um, some challenges were not much accessible parking near the bank center and some comments that the bank center is outdated and small um, and many people expressed the need for a new senior center. Um, and the need for more benches and outdoor gathering spaces in town centers. Mm. So. Um, Goal provide opportunities for use of public buildings and outdoor spaces by all by people of all ages and abilities. Um, and so I have planned for an expanded community center or senior center with ample parking and universal design. I want to make sure that's a priority. Um, it just seemed to come out of some of the comments. Yeah. Um, improve bi pedestrian bike networks in town centers with connections to trails and conservation and mm. recreation areas. Mm. Um, adopt universal design standards for all new public buildings. So that's you know planning, not not adding ramps later, making sure you know buildings have no step entries and and are accessible by everyone from the beginning. Um, assess trails for accessibility and handicapped accessible parking, and publish a map of accessible trails and their level of difficulty, accessibility, and amenities, um, such as picnic areas, accessible restrooms. Um, so make that available online and in hard copy form. Continue to create plazas or park pocket parks and identify locations for benches in downtown spaces to create more comfortable and inviting outdoor gathering places and expand recreational program for programming for older adults to encourage greater activity and social connections. 
I just like to see that number five expanded to say in every village center. Um, it kind of mm. looks like it's just talking mm. about downtown. Yes. Okay. Because there's um, six or eight village centers. We need them where the people are, not just mm. in, in downtown where I am. <laughs> right. Okay. Thanks. John. Um, I just wanted to reinforce the idea that there needs to be a senior center in town. I think the lack of, of a senior center is a significant problem for us. I actually had a conversation with the town manager probably at least a year ago, and it kind of left me under the impression that he at least had an interest in having a subcommittee that would work on planning a new senior center. But I haven't heard anything from him since. <laughs> So I, I don't know, Haley, if you've heard anything about that. Yes, well, thank you for, for saying that we need a new building. Um, <laughs> I do think that the, the town manager is amenable to that. And, you know, he and I have had discussions about how we can, you know, renovate the space. What can we do differently? What modifications can be done? So he's, he's certainly willing to work with us on that. Great. Are, is he talking about a different location or, or just working on the bank center and we're we're painting in broad strokes right now i think there are there are some other constraints on the town um but the fact that he and i are having these conversations regularly is something i take as a really good sign yeah okay great so that can stay as the number one action here i think okay um and i would actually uh, for number four we have at the senior center a um a trail guide of all the accessible trails in Amherst, a volunteer actually put it together for us. So it's available oh, okay. in print. We have a PDF. All people have to do is just get in touch with us and we can, can get it to you. Um, it's really beautifully done and it has all the information that they need to find those trails. Yeah, really, they did a great job. Yeah, they did. Great, that's great. Um, so I'll just say publicize <laughs> uh, the map. We can put that further down. That's great, you have one. Yeah, I like that you have the parking listed with that number. Okay. Yeah. Because that's how I, I assume the 50% uh, of the respondents on this um, survey get there. I didn't put, yeah, I'll add parking to that. Number five, isn't it? Oh. Uh, Number five where, is. Where the heck five. is it? <laughs> I saw it was something you just deleted, I think. I'll just add that there. Yeah, it definitely needs the parking, bike racks, whatever. Okay. Great. Could we also perhaps add under number six, not only the expand recre recreational programming, but spaces for recreation? For example, pickleball is really popular and to the best of my knowledge there's nothing in town other than a private facility that has courts kendrick should have bocce ball well i think there's a variety of things that sure you know when we yeah. put our heads together we could come up with so i think that would go a long way in helping seniors connect and particularly post-covid we appreciate outdoor activities Get some yeah. parity with the kids and all the playgrounds. <laughs> Good idea. Great. John, did you have something else? You no, I didn't. Sorry, I should have okay. lowered my hand. That's okay. Um, okay. Um, we can get to one more section, and then I think probably that's as much as we can do. Um, so health and community services, um, ensure that older residents of Amherst have access to health care and community services that support their ability to live long and healthy lives. Um, some of these came under aging in place, but um, it goes back to Amherst neighbors. So explore the possibility of working with other service organizations, colleges and universities, or schools to assist Amherst neighbors, volunteers with meeting the needs of older residents who have signed up for help. Um, and this, if Liz is still on, I wanna make sure that's, that works for you. Um, 
explore a collaborative arrangement with UMass School of Nursing and other programs to fill the home care needs of older residents. Explore the feasibility of developing neighborhood circles within the Amherst Neighbors Program where neighbor volunteers help other neighbors with basic tasks such as shoveling snow. Work with healthcare providers at Cooley Dickinson and other hospitals to establish a system of care coordination for older adults. Um, connect the CREST program with Amherst Neighbors and the Senior Center to ensure that older residents in need are connected with the services they need. I think that's probably it's already in, already in the works. Yeah, happen, happening. Okay. Um, should we take that out or? I would. I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, identify resources to provide respite care for family caregivers. And you're kind of already doing that, Haley, or? Yeah, I mean, we can we can definitely refer people if they call us. We're happy to work with people. Um, so we, we know what they are. Maybe just we can publicize, publicize that be, a little bit more. Um, yeah, you know, publicize okay. instead of identify. Okay. And yeah. Yeah. expand support networks for people with dementia and their care partners and include people with these experiences in program development. Yeah, so we kind of talked about that earlier yeah. a little bit. Do we mean um, senior center programs or other types of programs? Um, both. It sounded yeah. like, yeah, I mean, before we were talking about, you know, faith communities, I think, mm -hmm. you know, as the need is going to be growing, I think the more <laughs> the more networks there are, the better. So okay. I'll just put that down as um, senior center and faith. Um, and anywhere, then I anywhere, even the triple A's yeah. like, um, yeah, Highland Valley and so on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I would include the Pioneer Valley Memory Care Initiative in here. Out okay. Of, out of Cooley Dick. Yeah, I have that under. So what yeah, should I, I include? There? I saw that elsewhere. Just so with et cetera after Highland Valley because okay. there are other yeah. things that might come up. That's good. For the memory care, Liz, are, are you talking about expanding that or how, how do you want to include that? Um, I mean, the hope is that it will grow. So yes. Okay. with um service organizations or or well it's actually the way it's organized right now is it's with villages so it's okay. fully dick in collaboration with the local villages okay okay put that there um and then I have advocate for Medicaid reimbursement of higher wages for home care and home health care workers to build a more consistent and sustainable workforce. I think that's sort of in the works at the state level, but yeah, MCOA is working on that. Okay. Well, I would I would add workforce development, not just for the reimbursement, but to actually have more uh, PCAs and HHCs. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Because I think when we talk about housing, I think one of the reasons why people cannot remain in home in their homes is because they need a significant amount of care. Mm -hmm. And when you do the math, it's just too expensive. And so there's a place where I think housing and care come together um, and maybe yeah. at different models of housing, you know, yeah. you might have like a co-housing type setup, but you had caregivers who could somehow be connected to those places. I'm not being literal, but it just, I think a, a way that care can be built into a housing model. There is, there's actually a report that recently came out that I just got from the Mass Healthy Aging Collaborative and it talks about supported housing. Yeah. Um, working, yeah. yeah. Okay. I might move that to the housing section. 
Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> even even um, caregivers um, getting overwhelmed in the home, taking yes. care of yes. a family member, a home health aide that can go into that home and, and provide extra support. Sometimes the policies don't allow it because of uh, income and so on. And when you have a 70 year old taking care of a 90 year old, uh, it doesn't matter what the income guidelines are. That person is being overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> so we need policy change at some level. Yeah. Um, that really works for families. And if I could just chime in, it's not just for in-home care. Uh, there are study, studies that have come out, uh, residential care. And one of them was captioned, um, um, medication being chemical, they refer to chemical straight jackets for them. Yep. And uh, as quiet as it's kept and as quiet as we'd like it to, to be, uh, as noisy as we not like it to be, that's a reality. So what, what would that recommendation be? Uh, resources, uh, uh, make it affordable for people to live health, healthy lives. Yeah. Uh, whether it's in an institution or in a shared home setting or otherwise. Are you talking about the ombudsman? The um, no, no the old, older people's uh, ombudsman who examines these things. Yeah, I I don't know off the top of my head who, but what the um practitioner per patient they don't have oh. sufficient numbers because yeah. it does not result in affordability for the owner of the business and so that there's a uh there's very there's an over um an excessive number of patients per caretaker mm -hmm. And it, and in order for I I have sat with elders in the senior home, and um, it's essentially a good place. But uh, I've I've sat there and and uh, a woman called out for almost an hour that she needed to use the toilet, Oof. and nobody was able. They couldn't get to her. Yeah. And then when she sort of used it on herself, they were not pleased. Yeah. Which, you know, I can understand the frustration. It's frustration on all parts. So it's like having a way that we can engage in conversation where, as they say in business, uh, it's a win-win situation for everybody. And I don't know economically how you make that happen because the number of seniors needing services continues to increase with my generation. Yeah. Well, I think it's going to have to be a legislative change or, you know, yep. more coverage by yep. Medicare. Or, you know, right now, Medicare doesn't cover home care. You know, it's only Medicaid that covers home care. Um, okay, well, it is 6.30. I don't want to keep you all, but um, do you, any, John, did you have one last comment? I had one last comment, and that is underlying a lot of our conversation is a principle called the least restrictive alternative. When you talk about people wanting to remain in their homes or stay out of institutional care, the principle of least restrictive alternative really is something that we all need to pay attention to in planning for for seniors. Which runs directly counter to the to the um, private versus public. Um, you know, uh, it's a lot uh, more restrictive to uh, keep somebody in the public because there's no money. There's there's not yeah. much tax money. Uh, doing that but if you live at applewood or something like that which is uh, you know a more capital intensive uh, you get those choices we're, we're, mm. seems like we're always going to run into that one 
Yeah. We need more state support in, in elder services, just like we need more housing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we yeah. need more um, substance abuse treatment uh, facilities and so on and so on and so on. Right. Um, I'll just add that. Advocate. Let's be let's be firm advocates for the elderly. Yeah, yeah. Because I is one. <laughs> yep, yep. Gotcha. <laughs> right. <laughs> Gray Panthers all the way. Yep, yep. Okay. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing if I can. Did you resend this PDF yes. file with all the changes that you just made? Yeah, this is a um, right now. This is a PowerPoint, but I will incorporate these changes into the document and resend it. Um, and then, yeah, if if you have time at another meeting, there's a few more sections, mostly on the social, so it, it shouldn't take as long. But um, yeah, I will resend the document, and then um, yeah, feel free to send any other comments you have. Also. Okay. That's good. Thank you, Becky. I'll be thank in touch you. to, to yeah. reschedule Very another one. document. Thank you, Becky. Yes, thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Becky. Thank great you work. for all yeah. your great comments, too. Yeah. And to all the 16 people who participated. Yes. Oh, very, very, very good job. Meeting. A good yeah. meeting. Good yeah. Great yeah. Is there another meeting? Not yet. I'm going to work one out with Becky. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I, I do think thank there's you. lots more that um, yeah. would be great to, to cover. All right. Our okay. next meeting the on aging is next is Thursday, March 9th at five. If anyone else is interested in joining us then, but otherwise, is there a motion to adjourn? I so move. I so move. I, I so agree. <laughs> all in favor. Bye. Aye. All right. Thank Bye. you all so much and um, have a wonderful evening, everyone. Good meeting to you. Too. Good night. Bye.